show again. After this episode, I'm out of, I'm out of this um, random footage you're seeing. Uh, something I want to address is, yes, the phony footballs uh, were featured on um, a different channel, but related to this podcast years ago, are coming back up. I understand a lot of you all find these boring or whatever. I personally like them. And um, that's where it gets into a gray area in, a, in the world. Do you do something uh, for yourself? Like, do I do something for myself that I like and hope people like it too? Well, at least the people on YouTube and, and the way YouTube works, I, I guess I'm only amongst a true four or five handfuls. Um, practically nobody uh, watches any of the stuff I produce. And, uh, and that, you know, that leads, um, I really don't want to say how much I get paid, but that really, really, um, leaves no money. Um, you know, not, no, not even enough money to, to pay for bills. Um, however, that, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I spend a lot of time at home um, making videos. I don't do just the um, podcast. I, 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 um, I transfer videos for other people, and that brings in way more money than YouTube. And I also um, am trying to preserve all the commercials and all my videotapes on a different YouTube channel, which occasionally I put something there that doesn't fit. Um, that one, that one's not monetized. I don't get any money from it. That is, um, that's actual preservation because it's like a library. You should never have to pay for the library. The library should always be in the local government's budget. But I do have free time as well. And when I'm not gardening or taking care of the dogs, or, um, I could clean the house, but you know what, I'm a guy. Get the wrong person for that. So, I would normally, um, for the longest of times, there were, there was a 24-hour arcade at the commercial center here in Las Vegas called Mary Kay's. And um, when I was younger, it was harder to get in there, but the older I grew, the easier it was to go there, especially on my own. Um, this is how it typically went for me um, towards the end of high school and the beginning of college. Is um, I would go ahead and um, I'd pretty much grew around town with friends or or spent time with a girl I was dating or whatever and then I would somehow always end up at two places I'd end up at the Cafe Copio before closing where I would go ahead and order a black coffee uh, later it'd become Cafe Roma because Cafe Copio went out of business uh, lots of urban legends about that one locally and then uh I would go to Mary Kay's, where I everyone remembers me as the uh, guy who would play the Neo Geo, especially Bust a Move or um, what's the other one, Magical Drop, and yes, King of Fighters. I'd play that almost. Um, I was at Mary Kay's probably in a seven days out of a week, probably uh, seven nights, and. Uh, since my day didn't really begin until I didn't really have to go anywhere, I didn't have to leave till 9.15. So I usually woke up around like 8.45 in the morning, which is actually pretty late to me because these days I'm usually up 6, 7 in the morning without an alarm clock. And sometimes earlier if something's on my mind. And then I'd get down... So, I, I would probably come home about 5 in the morning, and um, um, I only need 3-4 hours of sleep. So, while well, you think, okay, he wakes up early, what time does he go to sleep? Well, I don't go to sleep till like, uh, 
Um, I don't know, a few years ago, I was getting tired at 10 o'clock. And now I get tired at maybe 12, 30, 1 a.m. And uh, usually I'm asleep by 2, and then I'm, I'm up by 6 or 7. So that's uh, about 4 or 5 hours of sleep. When I was in high school and college, I found out I only needed about 2 to 3 hours of sleep. I would have dreams. I would have dreams that, that seemed like it took hours, months, days, years. I wake up and find that it was just the next day. And Mary Kay's was open 24 hours. Um, before Mary Kay's went out of business, there's two things that did Mary Kay's in. The first thing was trying to open an internet cafe. And uh, the second thing was chasing out all the smokers, especially the cigar smokers. I myself was one of the cigar smokers. I would light up a uh, Churchill reject bought at Mr. Bill's. And I would smoke that uh, while having a large drink, and I would set it down next to me um, on the bar stool. There was bar stools. I would always have one bar stool open to that in an ashtray, and I would drink. I would sip my large drink um, while I was uh, smoking the cigar. If I played other games, and um, you know, I played the grid. I would sit down on the grid, um, look it up. But I would play the grid for hours and hours, and especially with friends. I would pay for them to play the grid with me. Um, another one, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Played that a lot, and including the other two. Um, X-Men vs. Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Street Fighter. Street Fighter Alpha 3. We played that. Um, those were the uh, four big machines. Uh, I mean literally big. They were on projection TVs. We play those. Um, Rush the Rock from Atari, which was later... Uh, I don't know how to put it. San Francisco Rush on N64 is decent. But Rush 2 is garbage. Anyways, I'm talking about Rush the Rock. It was, um, I guess, a variant of San Francisco Rush. Rush the Rock. Not Rush the Limbaugh. Rush the Rock. Played that. Man, uh, played a lot of Daytona USA. Played a lot of Tekken 3. Never got Soul Calibur in that arcade. Just um, a lot of Tekken 3. I mean, it's like I play these games at home. I had um, imported on Saturn. I had um, Dreamcast. Um, PlayStation, N64. See, The Grid. The Grid, I remember. Um, where is this magazine? I, I donated a whole bunch of my magazines to library things. Known that the local library system would have just sold or thrown away the magazines. I would never have donated them. The idea to donate the magazines to the fucking library, excuse my language, was so people can have it later, obviously. You know, that's information. But no, the, you know, the, the, the thinking here in Nevada is so backwards sometimes. The case in point, Las Vegas metro area has about, about a million seven people, maybe two million people. How come we don't have a world-class zoo here? That, that's my point. That should sum up Nevada thinking here. So... A lot of magazines I, I donated hoping they'd be preserved in some basement at the library, but apparently libraries don't understand why they exist here. But in one of the magazines that may or may not be donated, it definitely announced the grid, Midway's grid game, coming to uh, N64. And uh, I was really looking forward to that, but if we look at some of Midway's later N64 releases, in fact, if we talk about the N64, Library. I'm going to get to that in a moment. Um, as, you know, War Gods is an indication that Midway didn't know what they were doing with the machine. Uh, Rush 2. Um, but then there's Rush 2049, which is excellent. Hydro Thunder is excellent. Mortal Kombat 4 is excellent. 
The multiple versions of NFL Blitz are all excellent. And this is N64. I'm not... Uh, they're also excellent on PlayStation. I use the word excellent. Now, I never played them on computer, so I don't have an opinion. Um, what else did Midway? But then, you know, look at how cruddy um, California Speed is. Uh, look at how unpolished Cruisin' Exotica is. Especially compared to Eurocom's Cruisin' World. Cruisin' World is almost arcade perfect, in my opinion. So. Um, the Grid. I really wanted to play The Grid at home. Um, you know, I, 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 you can say what you will about internet cafes and, and these, um, QuakeCon and stuff like that. Um, nothing beats playing the grid when all the machines, I think it was six players. There's three players on either side of this enormously large machine. And nothing beat playing the grid when we're all playing and smoking cigars and cigarettes and drinking soda and coffee. And, you know, people just watching, lining up and watching at the arcade. I've been to other arcades in town, the Stratosphere the Stratosphere Arcade was pretty cool, and uh, it worked at arcade, and an arcade, and stuff like that. So, so to see the arcades just all disappear, um, I do believe Mary Kay's closed up shop for two, two to three reasons. Um, my first reason is um, the owner. Uh, this is what I've been told. I cannot prove this, and I'm not slandering anybody. This is just what I've been told. Somebody who said they used to work there, that the owner got married, and his wife wanted things a certain way in the arcade, so he went ahead and do that. The other thing I heard is he got busted for buying one copy and then installing it on all the machines on the Internet Cafe side. The third thing I heard is he got hit up with a major amusement tax bill, $70 per machine. Half of it has to be paid in the beginning of the year. The other half has to be paid at the end of the year. He, Even though he was profitable, the minute that tax came in, he was no longer profitable. The fourth thing I heard, according to a repairman for Namco, trust me on this one, um, the machines were so dirty and uh, ill-maintained, and some of them were just, had rats and cockroaches living in them and stuff like that, that um, Namco took the machines back because allegedly they were renting them, but then I've heard from Mountain View that he outright owned the machines. So, yada, 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 yada. I can't tell you which one is which. I don't know what is the truth about Mary Kay's disappearing. All I know is now, in it's the early evening, I'm watching a documentary called Chasing Ghosts about arcades on Hulu. While I'm making this, well, I'm actually not watching it. I'm actually making this. Because um, I have a third hour of footage and I want to use it. Yay! Um, and what I want is to go to an arcade. And there's the Pinball Hall of Fame on the other side of town. And there's a few strange places like the new game works where every machine is broken or stupid. Um, I, like I said, I've heard there's an arcade in the Boulevard Mall. I, I can't prove that. I can't. I don't actually know if there's an arcade in the Boulevard Mall. So, I've got, I've got nowhere to go. I'm not going to go to a GameStop. I can go to the library. They don't close till, uh, 8 p.m., but, um... It's not an arcade. What am I going to do? Get a book on arcades? Well, not a bad idea. But, um, I don't need to get a book on something I already know about, and I probably already read the book. Um, I don't know. This is, this is Las Vegas. Maybe this is America. Under the really 
really strange times we live in. I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to get political. Uh, and uh, I'm I feel damned. Like I'm not actually damned. I can I can go anywhere I want in town. But no, you know it's like I want to go down to the Meadows Mall. And see, there was the Meadows, the Boulevard, and the Fashion Show. And I only liked the, this is when I was a kid. There's there's more than that. I liked the forum shops because there was an arcade, the Caesars Forum Shops. The Galleria that I ended up owning stores in also had an arcade I spent a lot of time at. And then uh, obviously the Meadows Mall. The Meadows Mall, I, I, I mentioned this before, at its peak it had two arcades. Two. One upstairs and then um, Aladdin's Castle downstairs and then later it became Pocket Chain. Um, pocket change had the same space? No, they, they must have had double the space, but... Oh... Uh, you know, for everything just to go away, it's like... What would I do at the Meadows Mall? Buy a coffee at McDonald's and sit at the food court? Currently, the only interesting stores is uh, Hot Topic... Spencer's, um, as seen on TV. Well, Sears still has a meager electronics section. You know, when I was a kid, J.C. Penny used to have an electronics section. You know how I know this? Because we bought that cruddy VCR I'm always ragging on. I don't, am I ragging on in this show or am I ragging on the other podcast? Anyways, there's this cruddy VCR. Bought that at the J.C. Penny. Yeah. So, there's no reason for me to go to the Meadows Mall. I'm not going to go to Best Buy to look around. Um, even they have nothing to look at. I've never seen video game selections so meager in my life. Toys R Us has the best selection, and that's not saying much. It's so meager. Um... Like, I like the movie section at, um, Barnes & Noble. Is it Barnes & Noble or Barnes & Noble? Anyways, there's a Barnes & I'm just gonna say Barnes & Noble uh, by my house. I mean, like, walking distance. And, um, you know, I could go to Target and shoot the breeze with the electronics manager, but then I can also go to game, a handful of game stops and shoot the breeze with the manager there. Uh, don't feel like it. It's not the same. I want to go and play video games somewhere. I can dig up enough change where this is not a financial problem. I can even sell a few things that I got lying around. I don't need. Well, that'll give me a reason to go to Zia Records. But, you know, the record store is cool because it's still a, a record store. When I say record store, it basically means multimedia retailer. Um, they won't hire me because I'm overqualified, so that's cool. I don't, I don't want any of the managers getting fired or whatever because that, that's just that's not my style. I'm sorry, I got the wrong person for that. I don't, I don't step over people. I leave people hanging. But, you know what, that just makes him a better manager later. Um, I guess this is just me bitching for X amount of minutes, almost a half hour here, about not having an arcade to go to. And it's all because of that amusement tax. If there's no amusement, I'm not even saying have a part, no, there should be no amusement tax. I mean, there can't even be a small neighborhood arcade. I mean, they won't, because of the amusement tax, they won't even put video games in gas stations and pizza parlors. Pizza Hut remodeled all their stores so they don't have, have any video games anymore. Oh, you know what I remember at the Pizza Hut? They either had the Neo Geo machines or they had Ms. Pac-Man, or some tabletop game, usually Ms. Pac-Man. 
I mean, when I say Pizza Hut booth, people know what I'm saying. Pizza Hut lamb. The Pizza Hut salad bar with the with the wooden bowls. <laughs> people know what I'm talking about. I knew pizza parlors. Pizza parlor. CC's Pizza has a video arcade in the back. But you know what? That's a little creepy. Come on. A middle-aged man going into the back of a CC's Pizza where all the kids are. Hi. The games aren't even any good. That's the point. Okay. There's this pizza parlor. This is a memory. It's in Phoenix. I don't remember where it's located. It was in the actual city of Phoenix now. It was in walking distance. It was in the same shopping center as my uncle's shoe repair store. And they had an arcade that was always crowded. And when I'd go in there now, let's think about what I've owned at the time. There were Super Mario Brothers in there, but I had no reason to play that. But there was Ninja Gaiden Arcade. Did not own that. Ninja Gaiden was not out at the time for any home system. And while I kind of remember all the other bad games there, there was that one. I remember as a child, um, there used to be this pizza parlor, Marco's Pizza, Godfather, Godfather's Pizza on the east side of Las Vegas and I used to play um, Mario Brothers and Ghost and Goblins there a lot um, for some reason I was at the Aladdin arcade all the time that's the Aladdin Hotel and Casino I think it's because the Aladdin had a peaceful buffet but every time I went to arcades a lot of the games I did not own and um, that's what the pinball museum is great about. But I'm not going to go over there. Um, it's not really the, it's not really a hangout kind of arcade. Well, I guess I could go to Gamers Paradise and hang out. Um, I don't know though. That's a long drive. It eats up a lot of gas back and forth. It's um. It's about a 50 mile round trip from where I live. The Meadows Mall is um, five minutes from my house using the freeway. <laughs> so uh, there's a huge, huge, huge difference. I, I carry around with me on my 3DS and my iPad games at no arcade here in Las Vegas. Can even compete with. When I worked at a Namco owned arcade, um, the, one of the co workers had an annoying, annoying. <laughs> he's annoying because he's young. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's not a character flaw. It's just when a person's young, they're annoying. Person gets old, they're annoying. And in the meantime, we put up with them because we need their resources. And um, I remember he'd always like, oh, can I use your 3DS? <laughs> it's like, why? Oh, well, you know, they encourage us to play games, so I'm going to play your game. And it's like, why? Well, you have Super Mario Brothers. You have Pac-Man. You have uh, Street Fighter 4. You have uh, Dead or Alive. <laughs> so forth and so on. <laughs> All right. And he, he was pretty good, but I, I told him, don't, don't play my RPGs or anything like that. He's cool about that. So, about arcades, what, what would I carry? See, I have to get around that tax. It, the law is the law. Um, one way is to have games that nobody has. There's a new Castlevania arcade. There's a Metal Gear arcade. There's a Luigi's Mansion arcade. Those are three examples I would start with. Um, imagine going into an arcade in Las Vegas and, um, you know, a rather large 
arcades. I'm talking, uh, I'm talking an acre. An acre's a pretty, an acre's big. And, uh, I'm talking an acre. The building is an acre. <laughs> okay. The space is an acre. And as a consumer, I'm enticing you, the listener, come on in. And imagine uh, my particular arcade. I have Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2, The World Warrior. Street Fighter 2, Champion Edition. Street Fighter 2, Turbo. Super Street Fighter 2. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Hyper Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 3. Street Fighter 3. The second version. <laughs> Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Street Fighter 4. Super Street Fighter 4. The kit in making it into Ultra Street Fighter 4, which may or may not exist. Street Fighter versus Tekken. Hmm. You know, maybe the uh, special kit for Street Fighter 5, which does not have an arcade mode from what I've heard. From what I've heard, I have not played it, and um, wow, I have totally forgot to buy that on Steam. <laughs> now, um, not only that, then I have Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter Alpha 2 Gold, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Dark Stalkers, Night Warriors, Vampire Savior, Night Warriors 2, Vampire Saviors 2, whatever the new Dark Stalkers was, Street Fighter vs. X-Men, Marvel vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Uh, Capcom vs. SNK, Capcom vs. SNK Pro, Capcom vs. SNK 2, SVC Chaos, SNK vs. Capcom. Um, okay, like, wow. Rival Schools, Project Justice, um, Rival Schools Evolution. Um, Wow, I, I don't know. Uh, Street Fighter EX, Street Fighter EX plus Alpha, Street Fighter EX2, Street Fighter EX2 plus Alpha, Street Fighter EX3. Um, that one Mega Man fighting game. I think it's a Rockman game, actually, but whatever. I mean, just think about that. I can fill a whole area just of this. King of the Fighters, 94, 95, 96. 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. Oh, where does it go from there? The reason I stopped at 2003 is because I have... I have King of Fighters 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. But, you know, just keep going. A Samurai Showdown, 1, 2, 3, 4, Zen. And I think there's Zero. There's Zen and Zero, the same game. Um, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat 4. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Um, Contra, Super C. Hardcore Rise. I forgot to buy that <laughs> Um, Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Donkey Kong 3, Popeye, um, Dr. Mario, uh, Killer Instinct, uh, RBI Baseball, uh, so forth and so on. Would you come to this arcade with just what I've named? You know what I really, really want in an arcade? as the majority of my machines. I want to buy Ultra Cades and restore them. And, um, I want to buy legitimate Ultra Cades. I want them restored. And, uh, 
I want to buy the six game versions of, of Neo Geo. I want to buy Nintendo Super Systems. There's only, um, I think, 40 odd games for the Nintendo Super Nintendo Super System, which is the arcade version of the Super Nintendo. And I want to buy Play Choice 10. Wow, I'm being texted right now? Uh huh. Okay, uh, this is a business question. Hold on one moment. You're gonna stay on the air. Let's see here. Um. So, imagine. Um, I had all. I have all these numbers written down. But imagine. Imagine in my arcade which would be down near you and Elba. Um, imagine that, oh, that's funny. At the time I got texted, this guy got a phone call in the middle of the documentary. I would have these play choice texts. And um, I want to find out what's available for play choice 10. You know, so each play choice 10 has, has the games in it. Same with Neo Geo. Same with Nintendo Super System. Same with, um, I played this in an airport, at Heathrow Airport in London. There was a, it was like a Play Choice 10, but with Genesis games, and there was another one that had Master System games. Yeah, I want those too. And, um, like I said, Ultra Cage. The way I look at it is, the arcade, I would like to do a two-story arcade. Yeah, here I am again talking about the arcade can't shut me up about this <laughs> um and, you know it's a two-story arcade the um i wish i could do a three-story in japan they have three-story arcades let's say i build the building from scratch Ooh. and um you know i have to have certain things that comply with um, americans with disabilities act of 1972 so um Instead of stairs, I, I just have a ramp system on one on one side of the building. So take these ramps up to the third story. Let's say it's the north side of the building. Let's say um, my arcade entrance faces west. It's three stories. Um, you know, maybe it's not an acre big though. Maybe. Whatever, it's like a quarter acre bit. Yeah, let's, let's, let's put that there. That's realistic. It's a quarter acre. Not not the lot. The lot's an acre. And, um, yeah, you know, so, so I got I got the arcade. And um, the first story, the first story is all Tyco drum machines, DDR machines, um, what's it called? Burn it up or whatever. Oh, I can go to Circus Circus Arcade. I just thought of that, by the way. There's my resident bird. Um, I named this particular dove Bully because, well, he is. So I beat up a bird yesterday. Another dove. And then he chased off a blackbird. He owns the tree in our backyard. Tall pine tree. It's about, oh, about 50 feet. 60 feet tall. So, um... So the downstairs is all rhythm and interactive games, like Prop Cycler, sit-down racing game. Actually, uh, yeah, sit-down racing game. Uh, just two each. You know, there'd be two F-Zero AXs, two Mario Kart, Mario Kart, whatever, Mario Kart, whatever, Mario Kart, whatever. I'm just making that all up. This is kind of why I'm hoping to work for um, a particular company that's going to be opening an arcade in Las Vegas. I just want to work the arcade section. And um, um, after that, though, then um, I'm only working it to pay off some debt because I will be opening up my own arcade. Um, Gene Simmons had an okay arcade. I went, went in there, but um, the problem is we gotta buy a car. I don't like the car. Um, 
so the the first story well this would also have a two level basement because the uh the bottom level basement again using the ramps i don't i don't see a problem getting things in there bottom level basement is a repair and workshop and uh machine storage so the first story again is um you know rhythm machines and stuff and i'm gonna have machines on the outside on the, the side well, i'm not gonna be straight up on the street i mean this isn't japan um oh go to uh, gog.com gog.com and go ahead and buy um uh, 100 yen it's a good documentary on japanese arcade a little outdated but it's good this is where I get a lot of my ideas, is I constantly watch 100 Yen. And I constantly watch Chasing Ghosts. I constantly watch Special Winlet. Um, pinball, some token pinball um, will also be uh, downstairs. Um, I might get the fake pinball. Um, I may not necessarily have real pinball. And that takes away a lot of the thrill, though. But at the same time, I'm looking to to curb costs. Now, the second story is Ultra Cage, Play Choice 10, the Play Choice 10 is for Sega, <laughs> Genesis and Master System, and then to fill out the rest of the space will all be Ultra Cage. Nothing but Ultra Cage. Um, and then finally, the third story. Well, I haven't talked about the basement yet. I said it's a two-level basement. The third story that's up in the air, that's the hardcore area. These machines are brought in from Japan. And um, there'll be a bank of machines that are rentable by the hour where a person just gets the board put in. Um, this is like, well, I would say this is 50% of the uh, third story. And, uh, and with the, um, third story, it was also where my office is, so some space is eaten up. And depending, like, if I am where I, I want to be, and yeah, then I, I want my office definitely to look outside. Um, the other thing is my office is going to have special ventilation, so I can smoke cigars in it. Um, and they'll have home systems in there and stuff like that. It's not going to be a terribly big office. Um, maybe double the size of what I'm using. I've had a, I had a way smaller and more productive office when I worked at a TV station. So, um, yeah, the office will probably be about double the size of my home office right now. That'll be on the third story, special ventilation system. Um, so I can smoke cigars in there. Um, no smoking in the rest of the arcade, I guess. I don't know if I'm going to actually enforce that. Yeah, the problem is it's Las Vegas. But yeah, 50% of the upstairs is dedicated to um, renting machines uh, by now. Now, I don't have any pool tables or anything like that. That's for a different type of arcade. The other 50% of the upstairs, where my office sits, um, you know, my office eats up some of that other 50% and uh, the rest is actual hardcore machines um, not stuff I like like what I mentioned Luigi's Mansion Castlevania Metal Gear those arcade machines those will be downstairs in the first one now the basement is a different place altogether have you ever seen uh, David Dwyer's Dries David Dries Dryers um, arcade 84 video and he also has a wallpaper uh, the basement was going to look like that. It's going to be an 80s arcade, and that's where all the games I mentioned, all that Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, King of Fighters stuff, that's the kind of stuff I'm going to have down there. Um, you know, I, I understand someone go up to the Ultra Cave level or whatever, and uh, that's fine and dandy, but this one's, this one's more of, um, it's different. Um, they also be, it's not going to be balls to the wall machines like the other three levels. This is where grandpa and grandma, aunt and uncle, mom and dad, uh, they can sit down. My whole establishment will have free Wi-Fi and I do not have any control over what people 
upload and download. Um, and then there's also TVs above the height of every machine. And, um, you know, the TVs have to be spaced proportionately from each other and everything. There's no reason to have... Um, I've been in, I've not been in, I've seen inside of Insert Coin, there's no reason to have that many TVs. Um, if we're talking about what I think we're talking about, you know, the, the, put a TV here, TV here, TV here, TV here. So we're talking about six TVs per floor, but, um, the, um, only the first story and the second story get the TVs. They're also built a little bit higher. The third story is built too, you know, it's like just a 10 foot high roof. And, um, and there's no TVs up there. Um, we also encourage no religious political talk, you know. A person can come in here on election day for the President of the United States and get away from that crap. Yeah, that, that's what I, I just call the election crap, because that's what I think it is, it's crap. And, um, I want video game memorabilia. Well, not just really posters, not so much memorabilia up there. Now, the, um, in the 80s area, that's also going to have about six TVs. Now, they're going to, the six TVs, they need six things that are going to, that are supposed to play round the clock at all times. And, um, so the first uh, TV will play hackers on repeat. Um, another TV will play uh, 100 yen on repeat. Another TV will play uh, special when lit on repeat. Another one will play chasing ghosts on repeat. The, there will be no sound with any of these, by the way. Uh, and the uh, last two TVs, um, I have, I think I want one playing, uh, The Wizard on repeat. And, uh, not really up on any video game movies. Uh, War, War Games goes off on a candy. So even though there's an arcade and it has a lot of it actually does have a lot of arcade video game culture in it. Not exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and that these just repeat out of an Apple TV. Each one has a dedicated Apple TV that has, um, oh shit, I'm thinking of the Apple TV ones where I could store them locally. Okay, so, um, second thought, these all have a dedicated, um, Something dedicated to streaming them all day long. Oh, so I need, like, the last thing. I don't know. Captain M or something. Or I'll just... What I'll, yeah, what I'll do is I'll make, like, a playlist Super Mario Bros. Super Show, Captain M. I don't know yet. Um... I'm, I'm just thinking, like, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3. Or Super... Well, I don't like the Super Show because it's live-action segment. So it's either Captain N or The Adventures of Mario 3 or Mario World. And, um, that would be pretty cool. It, the whole idea is Arcade Ambience from Andy Hoffa will be playing. And it, it will be playing on, um... It will be playing on all, um, four levels. Nothing gets pumped into my office. It's also going to be playing Inco and Junction while it repeats. I'm going to have a second sound system. That plays uh, WTMK, or Mario All the Time Radio. Uh, he used to listen to Louie FM. I don't know what happened to them. Tootun Common. Never played that game. Um, about selling stuff, prizes, uh, whatever. Well, I will have um, claw machines and, and stuff like that. Um, the prizes... I'd like to give away, you know, that, that's pretty much, you know, typical stuff. I might put one full of video games, stuff like that. Movie tickets, whatever. Whatever. That's, that's, uh, so the, uh, bottom level, yeah, it's not balls of the wall games, and there, there will be a rest area, and I have a nice Wi-Fi system. Um, 
if I don't want to show, well, I don't mind showing special when lit. I don't mind showing chasing ghosts. I don't mind uh, showing 100 yen because there's like no nudity or anything in these. There's just there's some weird stuff in hackers. Um. You know, there are plenty of movies based on video games, but, you know, it's really which, which way to go on these. And, um, I'm sure I can actually find stuff. Like, I would show old, old episodes of Video Power. Why, why not this? I might show Club Mario. I actually have these, and I can edit these. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, whatever. Hey. Look, you got questions, comments, copy for binky at gmail.com. Support me at Patreon at patreon.com slash coffee for binky.